Now more on our developing story on Florida's Stand Your Ground Law. State Attorney Angela Corey, who has prosecuted high-profile cases, including the George Zimmerman case, the Michael Dunn case, and the Marissa Alexander case, has detailed her case against Alexander in a three-page document emailed to lawmakers. It comes as the Florida legislature prepares to debate a change to the Stand Your Ground Law to include immunity for anyone who fires a warning shot in self-defense. Alexander is currently under house arrest, awaiting a, re a July retrial. If convicted, she could face 60 years in prison. Now, some lawmakers have mentioned the Alexander case when discussing the law. Earlier, I spoke with Corey, who told me it was her duty to clear up what she called misinformation about the case from the media. However, her predecessor told me this is something he never would have done when he held that office. It would not be normal practice. And I think if you were to uh, canvas uh, prominent lawyers. I, I know Alan Dershowitz has been unbelievably critical uh, uh, of Ms. Corey. Uh, I, I think you'd find unanimity uh, among uh, ethical attorneys uh, uh, about the inappropriateness of, uh, of her press release. Again, that was the opinion of former Florida State Attorney Harry Shorstein. State Senator Audrey Gibson is one of the 13 state lawmakers who received the Corey document, and she joins me now on the phone. And Senator, what did you make of the document when you received it? Well, thank you for having me, and um, I was uh, certainly extremely perplexed and uh, really thought that uh, what I was looking at was horrible, um, which included uh, mug shots of uh, Miss Alexander. And did you request any information from the state attorney's office about this case to clarify any details? I have never requested any information for the state attorney on this matter. I've never called the state attorney on this matter. So it was a surprise. Uh, well, actually, after I saw it, it was a shock uh, to receive such a document uh, in an email. Now, um, I want to just read just a little bit of what um, uh, Angela Corey, of what uh, the attorney told me, um, in terms of responding to what Mr. Shorstein, her predecessor, had to say. It's long, but let me read it really quick. He said, my response um, to Mr. Shorstein is that this has been a highly unusual case procedurally and factually in that the media showed no attention or interest in the case when we did try it in an open courtroom. And the media started reporting erroneous information that someone on behalf of the defendant started reporting prior to her sentencing, which has put us in a very unusual situation to try and correct the misinformation. So this case was being discussed in legislative circles in Tallahassee, and in fact, two legislatures came to me to visit me two years ago between the trial and the sentencing to discuss the facts in this case, one of whom was Senator Gibson's close colleague here, who she mentioned as State Senator Mia, jo Mia uh, Jones, as well as Tony Hill, who she says came in to discuss the facts of the case. So why wouldn't we think they were interested in the facts of this case, because the case could influence laws being discussed in in Tallahassee. So my first question would be, is this case coming up as you discuss the changes to the stand your ground law, meaning the warning shot provision that comes up for discussion on Thursday? Well, first of all, uh, uh, you see how Angela Corey tries to tie two people to me, whom one is a state representative and both who work for the in the mayor's office, which has nothing to do with the legislature. Um, and so the the uh, her case that she's trying on these three pieces of paper don't um, really talk about the threatened use of force uh, bill that is on the floor tomorrow, which is separate from the Stand Your Ground uh, bill. She doesn't call it by name, but she implies that the law as it stands is, is on the books to protect people, such as if there's a robbery that took place at gunpoint and the firearm was discharged, but nobody was struck by a bullet, that person would still fall under the 10, 20 um, life um, sentencing structure based on how the state attorney filed the case. And when we reached out, um, obviously, to your, the 13 lawmakers, including yourself, who um, received the email, we did hear back from four who confirmed that they received it but didn't solicit it. We heard back from one, uh, Ms. Jones, um, who did say that she received it but didn't say whether or not she'd asked to see it. Um, to your knowledge, could, would, were any members of the, De of the Duval County delegation, the 13 of you who represent the area surrounding Jacksonville, mm -hmm. feeling that the case has not been presented accurately in the media, therefore you're not clear on the details of the case or you feel that they've been misconstrued in the way it's been covered? 
Well, there has been no conversation between me and any other member of the Duval delegation concerning this case, and it is not uh, the duty of the newspaper to try the case. It is the duty of the state attorney, if she has the facts, to try her case in court, not um, in the media nor in a three-page uh, document sent to legislators. I think that's ridiculous. And I also should note that in the statement that was sent to us um, from the spokeswoman for uh, Ms. Corey, she did mention that the governor's office also requested the information. We heard back from the governor's office saying that the state attorney's material had been previously distributed to legislators and leaders and others, and it was subsequently uh, re requested here as well. So it does appear the governor's oh. office did ask for it. <laughs> in, in, your, in your opinion, um, Senator, when this case is, when the law is being debated on Thursday, will this now incident following, that this release of information by the state attorney's office have an influence on you as you're looking at this law? Will you uh, use this information in your deliberations over whether to support the, uh, the warning shot bill? The, Angela Corey's uh, epistle, or whatever you want to call this, does not have influence. She did not come to a committee not one of the three committees that the bill went through to speak for or against the bill. And to send information on a particular case, the bill itself is not even about Marissa Alexander. It has something to do with an incident that happened somewhere else in the state to someone who was very senior in age. And, and that is um, really the, the uh, part of the impetus, and I'm sure that the sponsor of the bill will, will tell you that. It just so happens that it is coming up at a time when Ms. Corey has decided that, um, you know, whatever, she's going to have her way, and she wants to send Ms. Alexander away for 60 years because that's what she has decided she wants to do, period. All right. Uh, thank you so much, State Senator Audrey Gibson. And we should note that uh, Angela Corey's office also said they did not release uh, that email to the media, only to those 13 lawmakers. And so you can draw your conclusions from that.